quick introduction. My name is Alex Wilson. I am the owner and broker of record at Remax Wealth Builders Real Estate. I've been selling real estate in Toronto for over 12 years. Uh, number one Remax agent in Ontario for individual transactions in 2019. Number 13 Remax agent in Canada for production um, in 2020. And number 34 worldwide in 2020. Inducted on the Remax Hall of Fame and awarded the Remax Lifetime Achievement Award at 35. Uh, I turned 40 this year. Um, and what I think is most relevant is that's on the selling side. Um, but on the investing side, currently uh, I've turned a uh, 39300 deposit into a $14 million portfolio, which includes 14 condos, uh, High Park Triplex, an apartment building in Hamilton. And I always like to be transparent. This is everything I own right here. And I like to look at things in a 30-year projection time frame. So my current market value of my portfolio is nearly $15 million. But in 30 years, uh, just look at the chat here. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, thank you. Just... Uh, to let everyone know and, and why I looked at the chat briefly, I just wanted to make sure everything was working on video and audio. Uh, but uh, any questions you may have, uh, you can uh, put them in the Q&A box and I'll answer them uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, but uh, $50 million portfolio and in 30 years, that, that'll be worth $36 million. And real estate is truly, a truly a long-term game. We're not looking for instant gratification, um, but you can build substantial wealth when you look at the long term. So when I look at my portfolio, in 30 years, my portfolio will be $36 million. And this is just at a conservative 3% annual compounded, compounded growth rate. So we've seen larger growth every year, but I'm just like, let's, let's just keep it at 3% um, every year. So just wanted to be transparent with that. I, I have more detailed videos going into uh, showing people how you can build a pension fund and everything using real estate. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now because I want to jump into the presentation. Um, but if people want me to talk about that later, I can show them that later. But I really want to get into Diverge. And, and, and if you heard my preamble, my chatter, uh, I'm really excited about the development, but I'm also really excited about the developer, um, Rio Can. i big, 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 big fan. Um, I'm just going to stop the share on this part here and actually go into the, uh, the actual presentation about the project, not about me. Okay. So, uh, who is Rio Can and why, and why am I so excited about Rio Can? Well, Rio Can is one of the first and one of the largest real estate investment trusts in the in the country, uh, predominantly a retail uh, real estate owner, um, and they have significant properties in Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Edmonton, Calgary, and Vancouver. And a few years back, they really focused their portfolio on major centers and key geographical areas, and they are one of the largest real estate holders in Canada. Um, for a private company. So we have, re there's re retail re uh, real estate owners, there's office building real estate owners, there's industrial office, uh, uh, industrial owners, there's apartment owners. Um, Rio Can is, is involved in all of them, but what they own is land. And there's one thing you can't do in real estate, you can't, you, you can't, but you can't build condos without land. And they're one of the largest landholders, private landholders in uh, Canada in urban centers. So this is why I'm so excited about RealCan now. Getting in, they're already in the development game, but actually building uh, a residential development brand on their own, which they're labeling RealCan Living. Um and when, when you look at it, 40 million square feet in development, over $12 billion value in the land. So it, they are absolutely massive and dwarf the residential uh, real estate owners, developers in um, GTA in Canada. So it's kind of you've 
with COVID, you've awoken the beast and you have all this amazing strategically located land. And guess who owns it? Rio Can owns all these strategic uh, real estate developments because they had their retail on it. Now, what, what does retail have? They have large parking lots. So what are you going to do? You're going to redevelop those parking lots into residential locations with an amazing retail play on top of that. Um, so let's talk more about that. You know, uh, convenient. When, when you're building a retail play, well, you want to make sure that you're close to transit. You want to make sure that the shoppers can easily get to your location. So that's why with their strategic geographical locations, uh, Rio Can is going to burst onto the scene as a massive residential developer. Because as I said, $12 billion uh, worth of real estate under their management. Absolutely massive. Um, and that's really what they're going for. So it, one of their, their largest developments all, that you may know of is uh, actually the well. So the well, which uh, they're developing in downtown Toronto, uh, the well is a partnership of RioCan, Allied Properties, and Tridel. Tridel, the largest residential developer uh, in uh, Toronto. So RioCan is going to own the retail uh, complex in in this development, and they're also a financial player in the residential development of this massive, massive, massive site. Um, geographic, perfect location, great, amazing development. But again, what they're doing now, and we can see some of their other developments, they're breaking out on their own. So they're like, hey, why do we need partners? Let's just do this on our own. And this is where, again, the giant has, a the COVID has awoken the, the, the giant. And now they're getting, they're building a whole brand on residential living. And especially, and this is going to be their first solo project. And that's why you want to get in because you know, you know if they're building a brand, you know if they have a significant development pipeline of properties coming up, they have to hit it out of the park for the first one because they're going to build a following behind RioCan. So in the future, in five, 10 years, people are like, oh, you live in a real can built building, a real can living. Man, they're great. Because also think, think, think of the think of the across different business pipelines, things that they can do. Because they're one of the largest retail players in Canada. Hey, guess what? Um, I have all these residents that live live in these buildings. Wouldn't it be great to have a distribution pipeline from our retail? Uh, our retail tenants going directly to our residents. So now they can build distribution pipelines directly into their buildings that their retail um, tenants can provide to them. So imagine, uh, let, let, let's say uh, you, you're you in one of their, their malls and you wanted something from, let's say from, from Nordstrom's. Uh, well, here's a great thing. They can build an infrastructure pipeline to make sure that that Nordstrom delivery gets direct, directly sent to you. Like, like how amazing is that? How many different possibilities can they, can they overlap with their retail development arm, their retail ownership? So the, the synergies with the residential and the retail are, are mind-blowing what, what's going to happen in the next five to, five to ten years. And then that's when people are going to be like, well, I need to be in a real can living building because they offer the most convenient access to uh, my retail requirements, uh, my living requirements. Um, I want their distribution network. I, I just I can't live in a non-real can building because their connectivity to the retail component is too big. That's what you're going to see in the future. So, and these are some of the buildings that they've already been partnered with, uh, 11YV, which is uh, an iconic tower, luxury tower going up in Yorkville. You have Queen, Queen and Ashbridge, which was launched last year. Kingly, which is uh, complete, now a stunning building in King West. And then a purpose-built building, Strata building, which is uh, up in Little Italy. And this is some of the projects that they have. 81 resident, uh, residential buildings with 20,000 residential units currently in planning. A behemoth is coming. And that's where, again, where I talked about the synergies, the overlaps, the access to their retail component, 
building uh, distribution infrastructures directly from the retail partners to their residents in their buildings. It's going to be huge, and it's something they're uniquely structured to do uh, because they are one of the largest uh, REITs in Canada, and they're one of the largest retail REITs in Canada. So you have the Leaside Center, which is coming up in the future. You have the Scar uh, development of Scarborough Center. You have Shoppers World in Brampton. You have Rio Can Hall happening downtown. Massive, massive developments with that 20,000 units, 81 different buildings coming up. They have the ability to build that extra retail distribution network. Uh, here is the buildings right here. So it's going to be two towers, Verge, uh, 545 units, uh, strategically located. And I, I think we all know the location. Um, and if you don't, you will once I, once I describe it. You're right at the Queensway in Islington. So when you're driving on the 427 and you see all the movie posters on, the, on these uh, Cineplex uh, movie theater, that's a location that's getting developed. Not the Cineplex site, if that's the question that just popped up, uh, on the north side of the lot. So the north side that's facing onto the Queensway, that's where the two, two towers are going onto that site. So you'll be easily able to uh, access the the uh, movie theater from this location. Um, so very strategically located right at Islington and the Queensway. Easy access to get into the Gardner Expressway. So either if you need to get out of the city or if you need to get downtown. Also easy access either from the Gardner to get to the 427 or if you wanted to get drive up down the Queensway to get onto the 427 as well. Easy to get to uh, Sh uh, Sherway Gardens. Uh, mall. Uh, the subway, if I just go up Islington Avenue, is just north on Islington Avenue. So really uh, a very strategic, loca uh, strategic location. And what I found, and I said this the same thing when we discussed um, um, the development in Mimico, um, the Buckingham, Grand Central Mimico. These are locations that are centrally located between downtown Toronto and all the commerce outside of Toronto. So when we're looking at it, let's say you're in a relationship with someone and one person works downtown and the other person uh, works uh, outside of the, the core. Well, it's very difficult for the person outside of the core to get out of downtown. So these Etobicoke-based locations that are, that are close to the highway are strategically located so it's easy for someone to get outside of the GTA. Maybe if you're you're in uh, working up by the airport or in Mississauga somewhere, you can easily get there. And then for the person to get downtown, you can easily get downtown from this location. Um, I mentioned Sherway Gardens. You're just uh, up the road to uh, Islington Subway Station. Um, if I go south, then I get into, um, get to the college, uh, you, you the waterfront, park space. Uh, you have tons of things that are going on close to this location. And this is where you can see this whole map of different uh, amenities that are, that are close by. You know, shopping, Saks, Nordstrom, Apple Store, all those in Sherway Gardens, um, Queensland Park, Coronation Park. You know, if I just head south, I can easily access those green spaces. So a significant amount of uh, park space close by to this area. Um, so there, as I said, hum, uh, the college, Humber, Humber College, the Lakeshore Campus is six minutes. Billy Bishop Airport is only a 12-minute drive. Downtown Toronto, only a 15-minute drive. Showway Gardens, a seven-minute drive. 427, a seven-minute drive. Gardner Expressway, you're, it's at your doorstep. Islington Station, a five-minute drive away. Uh, and the Lakeshore Boardwalk, only nine minutes. Um, and drive, when I say drive... All units over 560 square feet come, come with a parking spot. A parking spot included with your purchase is unheard of in uh, tr uh, Toronto uh, incentives. And we've seen it in Oakville, but a Toronto project that's including parking with the parking spot, absolutely unheard of in recent developments. Uh, so discussing transit, um, we have... Uh, the TTT subway, uh, which is located on um, Islington. You have the GO train station at Kipling. Um, there's Royal York Station. There is um, 
the GO train at Mimico. So you are in the general area. There is transit accessibility um, within this area. And if you wanted to get to the subway, you just easily, because again, we're, we're looking at that major retail intersection. We all know where the, where the Cineplex Odeon um, massive movie theater is. You can easily jump onto the Islington bus and get onto the Islington subway to bring you downtown. And then when we look at where this location is, so we're looking at Tobacco, we got Mississauga, Tobacco, Toronto. As I said, you're strategically located in between the both of them. So if I need to get to work, one person can easily get to work downtown and the other one can easily get to work in Mississauga. You're dividing the commute between the two individuals. And when we look at how much in development is coming, is coming in Etobicoke, it's big. There's th over 33,000 condos in current development applications for the Etobicoke area and the Queensway corridor. And it's the second, the Queensway corridor and Etobicoke corridor is the second largest employment zone in the country. Uh, so you, the Pearson Airport is the largest. The next one is actually the Queensway and Etobicoke corridor. So you have jobs. There are jobs located within that Etobicoke area. Uh, so you do have, you don't have to rely solely on the Mississauga jobs or the downtown Toronto jobs. You have the jobs in the Etobicoke area as well. Um, you're more jobs in central business districts in Montreal, Vancouver, and Calgary. Um, and this Etobicoke Business Center has grown the fastest since 2014 versus the other four business centers in, um, in Toronto, in the GTA. And where have Toronto home values jumped the most? Etobicoke is the second highest appreciating neighborhood over the last year in comparison to all other Toronto neighborhoods. Um, Etobicoke at 19% after Scarborough. Why? Well, there's affordability. There's affordability still in Etobicoke. So that's why you've seen the big jump. And that's why you saw Scarborough go 25%. Scarborough has the most affordable options in, in the GTA. And Etobicoke jumped 19%. So it's the affordable option for individuals and will continue to be the affordable option for individuals. Um, and when you're in Etobicoke, and again, if I go specifically to the Verge location, you're looking at easy access to the lake, easy access to getting down to the Mimico location, easy access to the waterfront, um, green space, park space. It's significant. And we talked about the development applications that are coming, but there's a scarcity. There's a scarcity when we look at what's available uh, for condo options in the Etobicoke area. You know, when we compare Etobicoke to Mississauga, over uh, 3,700 condos for sale in Mississauga, only 778 in Etobicoke and 36, and we go back to Toronto, uh, over 3,600 condos for sale in Toronto. And we go for lease, even less. You know, 4,500 condos for lease in Mississauga, over 47 condos for lease in Toronto, only 405 condos for lease in Etobicoke. And within two kilometers of Verge, only 34 condos for sale and 19 condos for lease. So these are things to factor in when we're looking at, okay, what's my competition of the future? Well, there are limited options uh, currently for people to live, uh, whether it's renting or buying in the Etobicoke area, and then significantly so within the area of the Verge development. So Verge itself, two buildings, they'll be launching the West building first and then the East building second across the two developments, 400, no, 400, 545 units. The whole site is 3.25 acres, 1,200, 1,200, 12,000 square feet of indoor amenities, plus another 12,500 square feet of outdoor amenities and 30,000 square feet of retail. And there'll be a park space dedicated between the two buildings, plus a one valet smart home uh, throughout, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but again, when we talk about the retail play, you're talking about the largest retail landlord in Canada. So they have the access to the 
best retail tenants, the best retail tenants to bring into the space. And as I said, when we think about how much development that this one of the largest private real estate owners in Canada has and their retail component and the synergies and and what's going to happen around the retail play. People will say in the future, I want to be in a real can living because they offer me the most convenience, the convenience for a living location. So again, I'm sure maybe one of the questions that people have said, where is this building actually going? Well, it, it's not going where the, um, where the theater is, the existing cinema. No, no, these are going on the north side off of the Queensway. So you still have the parking lot. You still have the movie theater. This will be on the north side, and, and you're getting a nice park space as well. So first building going here, the west tower, that's going first, and then you'll have the east tower going second. So some of the west tower highlights, double height lobby with concierge, state-of-the-art, Parcel room delivery is very, very important. Can you imagine now living in a place that wasn't equipped to accept packages? I can tell you, I go into condo buildings and they're, 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 they're overflowing all over. I've been to buildings where it's literally, there's packages sitting there going, okay, just take it. Like it's your responsibility. Um, so Buildings in the future, and if you think of a, a, a builder that has a retail focus, they know retail, uh, they're going to know how to take packages. So state-of-the-art parcel room, state-of-the-art fitness center, content studio, first of its kind. I'm creating content right now. Um, so people that are looking to create online content, you're going to have a dedicated space to do that. First of it, I've, I've never heard of that amenity before. So they're thinking forward, thinking what's going to be required in the future. Creative space designed for co-working, meetings, or arts and craft. Expansive outdoor terrace with games area, kids play area, outdoor and dining, and lounge seating. One ballet integrated smart living throughout. Italian kitchens and vanities. Nine foot smooth finish ceilings. Um, which, got, when when I go in the condo units and people see the popcorn ceilings these days, they're like, oh my god, how do I get rid of this? So smooth ceilings is definitely a nice luxury to have. And you have your party room and cocktail lounge. Uh, the building amenities on the ground floor. So you have your parcel room, lobby, co-working space, pet, bike wash, yoga studio, fitness area. Your ninth floor amenities. So this is your outdoor terrace, party room, cocktail lounge, kids play area, uh, shuffleboard space. So again, we're going to see more kids living in condos. Um, that is the reality of the future. And I said, I said this five years ago four years ago, three years ago, you've seen this in my videos. It's important for that kid's space to be in there because there are going to be kids living in condos. That's the reality. If we go around the world, kids live in condo buildings. Kids live in apartment buildings. It's just something unique to North America where they do not. But with the escalating prices, like if you said to me, Alex, I want to buy a detached home in this area. I want to buy a, a townhouse in this area. Townhouse is going to cost you over a million dollars. Detached home is probably going to cost you over $1.5 to $2 million. So where are the kids going to live? Where am I going to raise my kids? They're going to be living in apartment buildings, and there's nothing wrong with that. You, you can start out, you can have your baby in an apartment building, uh, condo building. You can be in the condo building uh, till four to five years old, older. You can still be older in these apartment buildings. And then maybe you look at your next property. So these will be the stepping stones for young families moving forward to the future. So you do want a location where the future children can operate in. A great picture of the lobby here. Uh, looking at our co-working space. Um, looking at our gym. Talking about the uh, your content space, so creating content. Party room, cocktail lounge. Getting an idea, the outdoor terrace, seeing the kids' play area. Uh, and and I'm going to go back to the kids' play area because I do have young children. I have a one- and three-year-old, and we're expecting our third. And where we specifically live, we won't move because of the park space that's around us. Park space or somewhere to bring your kid to run around is absolutely massive. Massive, massive, massive. So having a space, if you're a young parent or a kid with a two-year-old, you're going to be looking going, hey, I can bring my kids up here. I, this is great. I, I, I need to live here. 
um, getting an idea of what the interior finishes will look like. Views. All units here have views. Here's the north view. Here's the south view. Because we're set closer to the Queensway and not right up at the Gardner, the south views are fantastic. East view, you get that view of the downtown core. West view, you're looking out to the Mississauga skyline and getting your sunsets. Um, and then looking at the different types of units here. So we're looking at 10% of the building being a three bedroom. We got 21% of the building being one plus den, 39% of the building being two bedroom, and then 30% uh, of the building being uh, one bedroom units. And this is again, where, where the value, the value play, where things are creeping up. Mississauga pre-construction pricing, it's averaging now nearly $1,200 per square foot, eleven seventy-eight. dollars Toronto, 1419 dollars Verge is coming out at eleven fifty, dollars including parking, including parking. That is an incredible, incredible value um, to live in Toronto, to own an asset in Toronto, to own an asset right off of major highways to easily get around. Um, incredible value. And as I said, you saw how much development Rio Can has in the pipeline. They're going to give you a value pay now until they build up the brand and then they'll have a premium associated with the brand. So now is the time to get in because they're offering a discount to get into their development. But in the future, as they build the value play, as they build that distribution network with their retail partners, as people go, I want to live in a real can living building, they offer the most convenience, then you'll start seeing a premium attached to the brand. But right now, this is their first solo development. You're going to get in at a discount because they're going to knock this one out of the park. And then you're going to slowly start to see premiums being built in for who's building the building into the future. And you get a parking spot with it. I don't know. Um, what's, what's the pricing like in the building? 70% of the inventory is under $750,000, including parking. 25% of the building is seven fifty dollars to nine hundred, dollars including parking. And only 5% of the inventory will be over nine hundred dollars including parking. Um, incentives, these are the incentives a builder passes along to me. So what do you get as a investor getting into this building from day one? You get the extended deposit structure. You get reduced assignment fee. You get development charges capped. You get the right to lease during occupancy. And units, and this is the big one, Right there, just circle this right here. Parking included in all units over 700, uh, 700, 560 square feet. The developer, as I said, Rio Can Living, massive, 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 massive. Um, so I'm going to stop the screen share now. We see, I see the questions piling up. So, oh, hey guys. I'm just seeing some some familiar names in uh, in the uh, in the people that are that are attending. So great! Thanks so much for coming in online. Always exciting to see friendly faces. Um, I'm going to open up. I'll open the chat quickly first. Uh, okay, are there lockers? Lockers will be available on wait list. Um, and now I'm going into the Q and A. Uh, how many floors of the building? So the first building that's launched, it's going to be so the first launch will be 200 units and 10 floors. Um, asking to speak to the exposures so again when we look at the exposures in the building uh, south is going to be clear you're looking onto the cineplex odeon parking parking lot north you're looking onto the queensway so queensway and that area is six lanes so a nice clear view on the uh, north side west you're looking clear onto the um, mississauga skyline and then when I look, uh, so that's east, oh, no, west, and clear into the Mississauga skyline. And then if I'm looking uh, east, uh, depending on its, uh, on where the unit's located, uh, I'll have a view of the uh, Toronto city skyline. Um, and then if we have any more, okay, there we go. What is the actual assignment fee saying it's reduced is uncertain. So in the, uh, this whole thing is being recorded. So I'll outline exactly what the uh, fees are uh, when uh, when the email is sent out to everyone. Um, now, I, I, I do feel very passionately about assignments. 
so I'll, I'll take a little segue here. So I, I, I do enjoy getting that question. Um, I do not believe in assignments. If you looked at the very first slide that I that I gave where I introduced myself, um, you build wealth in real estate by buying and holding real estate. Real estate is not a game of instant gratification. You know what? This is a great segue. This is what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm going to go back to my share my screen. I want I want to get the idea of assignments out of people's heads. So I'm going to share the screen quickly. And I'm going to do this part as fast as possible. Okay, so let me just get to the view. You know, I'm just going to do it right here like this. Okay. Um, okay, so I talked about here. 30 years, my portfolio would be worth $36 million. My background's in economics. So we have to talk about inflation. What's $36 million in today's purchasing power? Uh, well, that would be uh, $21 million. And the beauty is, in 30 years, I will have no mortgages on any of my properties. Why won't I have any mortgage in any of my properties? Because that aligns, 30 years is the length of the amortization period of my mortgage, and for 30 years, a tenant has paid off the property. So free and clear, in 30 years, I'll have a portfolio, $21 million, in today's purchasing power, today's dollars. And what that equate to? That equates to, if I put a 5% return in 30 years, what, what would I pay myself? I could pay myself over a million dollars a year just living off of the real estate portfolio because I want to protect against inflation. Let's, let's do 2% of that back into some sort of investment. So now, now I have a self-sustaining asset to pass on to my future generations. That's how true generational wealth is built. That is how true financial freedom is built. So you want to buy and hold real estate. Again, I'll have the exact assignment fee in the email that I send out, but I think this is so important. If we rely on instant gratification in real estate, yeah, maybe I'll make a few bucks. I do expose myself to a, some potential loss because I only lose money in real estate when I sell. So don't put myself in a situation ever where I have to sell. Um, but then by buy and hold, I know I know I'm going to be wealthy in the future. And how do and you may be going like, "Well, Alex, I can't I can't build a 50 million dollar portfolio." You don't need to. I broke this down. So for every million dollars worth of real estate you own today, this is what in 30 years your 5% ROI in today's purchasing power will grant you for a salary. And why I'm so focused on this, why I'm so focused on this is the idea that the company you're working for is going to provide a pension for you in the future. You got to get that out of your head. You got to look after yourself. You have to look after yourself. Let's talk about Nortel. Where's Nortel? Maybe some people don't even know what Nortel is on this call. Well, Nortel was one of the largest telecom providers in the early 2000s. It went bankrupt. You know what happens when a company goes bankrupt? That means their pensions are gone. Or they only get a part of their pension. So you work your ass off. Sorry for the bad language. You work your bum off for 40 years for the company. You've made that the, the social contract with the company. I give you 40 years of life. You take care of me in my old age. It's all BS. It's all BS because that company may not be there. That was the mentality with my parents growing up. So unless you work for the government and you have a defined benefit pension plan, which those don't exist in the private sector. And if, they, if they're still with a the company, they're probably legacy because they probably negotiated them out in, in um, bargaining agreements. I'm getting way down too much in a rabbit hole talking about pensions. Moral of the story is you got to look after yourself. So for every million dollars worth of real estate that you own today, this is the payout that you get in 30 years. You could have $70,000 a year in, in today's purchasing power in 30 years. My recommend payout be 42 because I want to protect against inflation. Two million. 140,000, 84,000 a year. That's buy and holding, buy and holding, buy and holding. That's the only way to build perpetual, perpetual um, real estate wealth moving forward in the future. So I just wanted to get into that. Sorry about my little little rant. Um, but it's the you know, time. Time is a true asset. It's not. 
it's not money in this case. Time is a true asset. So depending on what your demographic is and what your age is, time is, is your, your real value in, in, in this. So I'm going to stop that, share, back to my questions. Um, okay, back to questions. Um, okay, no more, no more questions since I, uh, since I went on that tangent about, about assignment fees. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'll just give it a couple more minutes to see if anyone has any more questions. Well, actually, what, this is what, I'll, what, what I'll talk about then. Next steps. So if you are interested, uh, an email will be going out. Well, A, you got an email from me already about this uh, to know that to attend this. So if you have any questions, you can simply reply to that email. But another email will be going out with a recording of today, so you can rewatch today. That'll have the pricing and floor plans for the development as well. If you're interested, uh, you can fill out a worksheet online with a link to that. The builder will be allocating units on August 4th and 5th. You need to get your worksheet into me uh, by 10 a.m. on August 3rd, but ideally much earlier than that. Um, get your worksheets in. If you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me, there'll be a link to book a call with me, so you can do that as well. Where we can talk about your own personal situations and keep the conversation about this. So your next steps are, A, you can reply to the email. Um, all the information in the, in the email that you got to attend this webinar today, there's pricing, there's floor plans, the opportunity to book a call with me, the opportunity to send a, a worksheet in, that's all in the email that you would have used to attend today's uh, webinar. You'll have another email coming out which will uh, discuss uh, um, this video replay and you can watch that. You can also subscribe to me on YouTube. You can see all my fun stuff um, on there and, and you can also book a call with me. Um, but again, where I see the play on this one Rio Can's first solo building. One of the largest private landholders in Canada, Dwarf's current residential developers, they're gonna hit this building out of the park because they have another 20,000 units in the pipeline. I think the number was 81 other developments. This is number one. So they're gonna hit this out of the park. You get a discount to buy with this developer today. There will be a premium built into the future because they are going to succeed. This is part of their whole plan for the next 10 to 15 years to transition to the residential development side to profit on all the land, to maximize, maximize the value on their current land holdings. So this is the behemoth. It's woken up. You get in before their name Blows up. Well, everyone knows what Rio Can is, but when before the Rio Can living game, uh, name blows up, and there will be there will be synergies with their retail component, and people will go, I want to live in a Rio Can building because that offers me the most convenience. That's what Amazon was built on. Amazon is built on convenience. People will pay a premium for convenience in the future, and this is what Rio Can is uniquely strategically able to do um, with their additional uh, retail component. Just double check questions, no more questions. This recap will go to everyone. Thank you so much for coming online. Looking forward to talk to everyone in the future. Okay, talk soon, bye-bye.